listen, coming up as a young person, uh, did you have aspirations of making it to the pros or was basketball just like, uh, for me, basketball was a means for me to get education because I didn't have that kind of money. My family didn't, so I used basketball to further my education. Was it the same with you or? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, for me, uh, basketball was always something that it could take my mind off my reality. You know, you know, it was, you know, turmoil at home, which a lot of times, oftentimes it was, you know, that was a way for me to escape and go and, and lose myself in something that I was passionate about. But I found out many, many years later that I was OCD. So it, it actually worked for me. <laughs> so that was a great combination for me to become a pro. You know, I was like, out there, you know, right. I'm trying to escape it and I'm just doing it over and over again. So, hey. It worked. I heard LeBron was the same way. So hey, it works. It works for some people. Yeah. Obsessive compulsive disorder would definitely be good for being a pro athlete, right? It well, can, can you imagine that? You know, can you imagine it? So uh, for me, I didn't know it at the time, but that's what I was doing. Listen, as you were growing, when did you start growing and realize that you were pretty good at basketball? Well, I was, I was always a big guy, you know, bigger than the other kids. Um, so when did I really start getting good at it? it? Was probably about the seventh grade. You know, I was just so big that you know there wasn't a lot of kids that were going to stop me once I was. And I always posted up, so it was easy, you know, for me to excel then. But when I started running into people that were bigger, I started wondering just how much I loved the game, and the love was still there, and I just stayed with it. So was it your high school coach or your college coach that got that helped the get you fueled into playing? Wow. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, I would say high school coach. Uh, I would say my middle school coach because he cut me. He threw me off the team. Uh, I couldn't do uh, I couldn't do leg raises because I had a hernia. And he said, "You're lazy. You you don't work." So he threw me off the team because I couldn't do it. And later, of course, he put me back on the team. But you know, what I was never his name? What was I, his I, name? I, I, I don't know. Never do that. But anyway. The the point was whatever. You not gonna I, give us his name? No, never. His, How his come? Is not, it was, that wasn't the point of the story. <laughs> the point of the story is I overcame that obstacle of him not believing in me and taking away taking something away from me that I that I really loved, and he he just didn't know what he was doing to me. I begged to be back on the team. He put me back on the team, and later, you know, that was that was the spark that I needed. You know, that, do you really love this? So it carried me on. And then the thing that happened in high school that I'll never forget is back then coaches could just literally lay hands on you. And I mean, I'm not talking in a, in a religious way. I mean, they could lay right. hands on you. And my coach did that to me. He, he lay, all I could remember is saying to him, well, so what? And I just remember seeing my feet in the air. And I was like, this, how did this happen? He was body planning me. And he took me down pretty hard in front of the whole team and everybody was watching. He said, get out of my gym. I'm not going to tell you his name either. So, bottom line Listen, is, listen. wait, 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 wait. He got my attention and he changed my life because I was a, I was, I was one of those smart aleck talk back, kind of like you. I just talk, 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 talk trash and I talk to the wrong people. And every now and then there were consequences. Stefan, listen, we know on the streets, snitches get stitches. Yes, right. This is insightful <laughs> BS. You got to say a name, man. You can say I, a name. I can say no, but see, hey, listen, they'll want to hear their name on the Coop podcast. Showtime. They would Coop. love to hear the name, but you, Coop, you have people that are so intellectually gifted. They're going to research it. They're going to find those people. They're going to find out when I was in middle school. It's the internet now. I know it's kind of strange to you, but it's the internet is a, a lot. No, of, listen. They'll you find me. They'll people. find out. You can huh? thank those people for giving you that tough love. That's what it well, was, the, right? Those people will probably get trolled to death on the internet right now for doing what they did. That was abuse. They would. That would be the worst thing in the world to do to those people. <laughs> <laughs> they got through to me. It wasn't what they did to me, it's how I responded to what they did. And Understood. that was great. 